Two SR-71 Blackbirds broke the sound barrier above Hawa Lo, the largest Vietnamese prison camp during the Vietnam War, on May 2nd and 4th, 1972. The sound was meant to convey to prisoners of war that they were going to be free, and a Navy SEAL rescue operation was on its way. Descent within the jail, however, complicated the Thunderhead operation, which was a bold and audacious communications network constructed within the prison walls. During the Vietnam War, Hua Lo, the largest prison in the central Hanoi, was used to house numerous American captives. It was called Hanoi Hilton because Lieutenant Commander Robert Shoemaker discovered a Hilton branded bucket in a shower constructed by France during the colonial era. Commander James B. Stockdale, the most senior naval officer held as a prisoner of war, was imprisoned at Hualo in 1965 and learned to tap code generated by other captives during their detention. POWs in Vietnam were a group of people who maintained a communication network using secret notes and communication gadgets. Commander Jeremiah Denton, a crucial prisoner, was shot down and sentenced to 10 months in solitary imprisonment, then forced to appear in a propaganda broadcast. During the televised broadcast, Jeremiah faked being blinded by the spotlights, so Jeremiah can blink out T-O-R-T-U-R-E in Morse code. He faced harsh consequences for his brave act of rebellion. Denton also devised a code to communicate with other inmates, which he used to influence them with his broom motions. Following the US Code of Conduct for Prisoners of War, Commander Stockdale became the leader of the Prisoner Escape Committee at Hualo. During the Vietnam War, 771 U.S. military personnel were captured, with 658 of them coming home. The majority were detained in one of 15 camps scattered around North Vietnam. Many of them were imprisoned by Hua Lo for three months following their abduction. Stockdale, a United States military officer, was permitted to write to his wife in December 1965, and again two months later. Mrs. Stockdale, on the other hand, discovered perplexing comments and references in the letters. She alerted Navy intelligence personnel in San Diego because she suspected he was transmitting coded signals. She then met with the Commander Robert Burroughs in Washington, D.C., who agreed to coordinate efforts to contact her husband. In 1966, a coded communication including an invisible ink message embedded in a Polaroid was transmitted to a U.S. soldier. The telegram, dated January 2, 1976, provided 40 names of American detainees. The secret message was modified to emphasize the importance of rescue operations, focusing on the North-South Railway and the Hanoi radio station for propaganda purposes. Global politics and acts by the U.S. government also had an influence on the plight of prisoners of war. The Nixon administration exposed North Vietnamese mistreatment of American captives in 1969, promoting the Politburo to draw a resolution urging for better treatment. By the first month of 1970, 600 letters had allowed 100 families to communicate with their loved ones. The resolution's passage authorized the U.S. intelligence to double down on the covert signals. The U.S. Air Force employed the SR-71 Blackbird plane between 1964 and 98, with 32 planes manufactured. It was constructed with a small radar cross-section and was camouflaged in dark paint to blend in with the night sky. During the Vietnam War, the SR-71 was suitable for reconnaissance since it was the world's fastest and highest flying manned aircraft. Missions were dubbed giant scale and they took place once a week although recuperation may take up to a month. Beginning in 1968, weekly flights were decreased to once a month and by 1970 they had been increased to twice weekly. Due to technical issues, two planes were lost during this time period. Despite their stealth, the Blackbirds were not entirely unnoticed. As the North Vietnamese fired 800 surface-to-air missiles against them during the massive operation,
After the unsuccessful escape of two American officers, John Rimesi and Edwin Atterbury from a Hualo camp in 1969, the Department of Defense created a plan to rescue American prisoners of war. The top officers in charge of the capture updated the prisoner of war code of conduct, declaring that Americans would only try to escape with outside support and a high likelihood of success. Despite the promise of improved treatment, the captor's brutality prompted Chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff Thomas Moore to sign a memorandum authorizing Operation Thunderhead. The first objective was to acquire a tiny island in the Red River to serve as an observation post and rendezvous place for rescued Americans. The USS Greyback submarine and HH-3 helicopters were dispatched to Vietnam, but they were unable to find any escapees near the Vietnamese coast. The USS Greyback sunk in April after losing her moorings. Navy SEAL Team 1 and Underwater Domination Team 11 were sent to North Vietnam for Operation Thunderhead in June 1972. The CIA felt that secret contact via prison radio allowed for rescue operations at Hoano. Lieutenant Commander Edmund Towers oversaw the mission, which compromised employing smaller delivery vans to spy on the region and conduct wider reconnaissance prior to rescue operations. Captain John Rimesi intended to flee with a fellow prisoner of war in order to steal a boat and travel to the Red River where he would be rescued by the Special Forces. President Nixon approved the plan. Whether, however, Hamburg reconnaissance his operations a week before the rescue mission. Captain Rimesi invented a new signal to alert the implicated convicts, fearing the ramifications for all prisoners. Two SR-71 Blackbirds flew over Hanoi on May 2nd and 4th, 1972, with a third aircraft on reserve in case of failure. Every day, one jet flew supersonic causing a sonic boom. Two planes flew at supersonic speeds, causing a sonic boom and informing prisoners of war at Hualo that their escape and rescue plan could be implemented. The intelligence establishment thought the effort had a 90% probability of success, but many convicts disagreed. The interruption in reconnaissance in the region was less significant because the intelligence community had given adequate information. Concerned about the potential ramification of his adversary's escape attempt in 1969, Captain Rimesi sought advice from the prison's top-ranking officer on the Prisoner of War Code of Conduct. He emphasized the significance of guaranteeing the safety of all prisoners, including himself, before potentially releasing any. However, owing to poor communications network, the top-ranking commander revoked his clearance for escape efforts, resulting in the mission's end and the loss of Navy SEAL Lt. Melvin Dry. The majority of Vietnamese POWs were not released until January 1973, where 691 were returned to the United States. President Ford awarded the Medal of Honor to Commander Stockdale and others for their efforts in organizing and guiding prisoners. Thank you for watching my video. To watch more videos like these, consider subscribing to this channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.